Hello friends, welcome to Oracle 21C new feature video series. In this video, we are going to see about the few of the enhancements available in for loop functionality starting from 21C onwards. Before jumping into 21C specific example, let me quickly take you through the Oracle documentation and few examples in the previous version of the Oracle and then we will look into the 21C specific example. So here is a snippet of Oracle documentation from 21C specific to for loop functionality. We all know that the for loop is basically to iterate over a range of values or over the output of a result set or over the cursor output or over the elements of a collection. So the below mentioned functionalities are available from 21C onwards. The first one is stepped range iteration control. The second one is single expression iteration control. The next one is collection iteration control. The fourth one is cursor iteration control and the next one is multiple iteration controls may be chained together and then new stopping and skipping predicate classes that have been added from 21c onwards. So in this thing few of the examples I'm just going to cover for example the rest of the thing specific to collection and cursors I will cover in the next video in the same video series. So before jumping into 21c specific example let me just quickly take you through the for loop example from other programming language for example here is a for loop example from c program basically the intention of the program is to print the odd numbers between 1 to 10 so what we are writing here is for i equal to 1 i less than or equal to 10 and then i equal to i plus 2 so basically there are three important thing with respect to this for loop that is the starting range of the loop and the end range of the loop and what is the increment value that should happen for each iteration. So in this case the starting value is 1, the end value is 10 and every time a loop executes it increments by 2. So within the loop we are just printing the loop variable i. So basically it will just print the all the odd numbers that means in this case the for loop will execute 5 times because for every iteration the loop variable will be incremented by 2 that means while well, the first iteration the i equal to 1 and the second iteration the i will become 3 so basically the for loop will execute 5 times and it will just print the odd number so here is a similar example from python programming though the syntax is slightly different but the core logic is the same so here is the starting range here is the max range that are the end range here is the increment value that means it will start with 1 and it will execute till 10 and every iteration it will just uh, increment by 2. Now let us see the example from oracle for loop. So here is the syntax of basic oracle for loop. Here is the start value and here is the end value. We don't have exact equivalent for this step operator or the increment or decrement operator. The for loop till the previous version will just support to iterate over a range of value. And the default increment is always 1 and we cannot change the increment or decrement here. It will always increment by 1 only. That's why in this example it is just printing from 1 to 10. Suppose if you want to achieve the similar functionality in Oracle, generally what we used to do is we used to implement those functionality within the loop. So basically the same program we will just uh, slightly alter and we will handle programmatically within the for loop. That, that means for loop will execute 10 times but within for loop programmatically we will avoid all the even iteration for example here is the modified program so generally what we used to do if it is odd then we will exclude only for even output we will just print that means technically the for loop will execute 10 time but within for loop we are excluding all the even iterations but in this case for loop iterations will run only five times in in all in all the previous examples now starting from 21c onwards we have a lot of uh, new functionalities available in for loop which supports these kind of uh, new things something like uh, we can add increment operator and then there are a few other functionalities which we are just going to say in a while before jumping into 21c specific example let me just quickly take you through few examples till 19c so i've just connected to 19c enterprise edition database so here is a very basic for loop which generally we used to write which will iterate over a range of values starting from 1 to 10. Let me just first execute. So it just prints 1 to 10. What max we can do till the previous version is we can just go and add one reverse keyword here 
so basically in this case it will just execute the loop from 10 to 1 this is what the max we can do we don't have an option to say increment or decrement or suppose if i want to say that i want to execute the loop from 1 to 10 and then if i want to say i want to execute the loop from 40 to 50 i cannot do this in a single loop instead what i can do is we can just do it as like a two looping operation one from uh, 1 to 10 and another is like 40 to 50 so in this case it is technically like two loops one from uh, 1 to 10 in a reverse order and the second loop is from 40 to 50 in a reverse order starting from 21c we have a lot of new functionalities which will support the increment and we can do multiple looping operation within the same loop right now let us look into the 21c specific examples so as i already told there are a lot of functionalities available uh, from 21c onwards like stepped range iteration control single range iteration control cursor iterations collection iterations and multiple iterations that can be chained together and there are few new stopping and skipping predicates that are available from 21c but in this example uh, i'm just going to cover three of these example or three of these functionalities one is a stepped the next one is a single iteration control and then multiple iteration control that may be chained together probably the rest of the things specific to collection cursor and new topic and skipping predicates i will cover in the upcoming videos in the same video series so in this video with specific to these three that is step range iteration control single range and multiple iteration controls i'm just going to cover using five examples just we are going to see five examples which will help us to understand what is stepped range what is fractional range what is a fractional stepped range and then what is a single expression iteration and then how to chain all the iterations together now let us jump into 21c specific example let us start with stepped range iteration example so connected to oracle 21c express edition database so here is our very basic for loop which will just iterate from 1 to 10. Let me first execute this plsql block. So as expected it is just printing starting from 1 to 10. So the equivalent of this for loop is nothing but it is like for i equal to 1, i less than or equal to 10. Since this for loop will always iterate or increment by 1, let's just put i equal to i plus 1. So this is the exact equivalent of the for loop from 21 c onwards what we can do we can specify the increment value by specifying the by keyword as part of this for loop syntax we can say by we can say by what value we want to increment let's say by 2 so this is exactly equivalent to i equal to 1 i less than or equal to 10 i equal to i plus 2 okay now let me just execute this plsql block now you can see as expected for every iteration the loop variable i is incremented by 2 that's why in the first iteration it is printing 1 and in the second iteration i equal to i plus 2 so it is just printing 3 that's why it is just printing odd number in this case the loop is actually executed for 5 time so here is the code for your reference so the key learning here is by specifying the by 2 we can specify the increment value that is for each iteration by what value the loop variable should get incremented let us move to the next example that is fractional range iteration so here is our basic for loop which is just printing from 1 to 10 so let us just make it as like 1 to 5 for this example so it is printing like 1 to 5 incrementing by 1 from 21c onwards we can even have an increment in the fractional number for example by default when you say 5.6 what will happen is it will just treat it as a 6 and it will increment to 1 to 1, 1 to 6 but let's say like 1.6 so in this case what will happen it will just increment from 2 to 6 that means it will round off to the nearest whole number and then it will increment from 2 to 6 but suppose if your expectation is to increase exactly by 1 that is 1.6 then 2.6 then 3.6 something like that that is possible starting from 21c we just need to specify the data type here let's say number of 5 comma 2 now you see the difference it is incrementing with the same number it is not rounding off instead the increment is happening in the fractional value also this is the example for fractional range iteration 
So here is the example for your reference. So the key learning here is we need to specify the data type as part of the iterator variable. Now let us move to the third example that is fractional stepped range iteration. So let us take the same example which iterates from 1.6 to 5.6. By default the increment will happen as 1. Suppose if you want to say you want to increment by 0.5 in this case then we can specify our step operator by 0.5 or 0.2 whatever the value whatever the fractional value you can specify. Let's say I'm specifying by 0.5. Now you can see it is incrementing by 0.5 for each iteration. It is not incrementing by 1. It is 1.6 then plus 0.5 2.1 plus 0.5 2.6. Suppose let us let us make it as 0.2. So for every iteration it will increment by 0.2. One point, it starts with 1.6 then 1.8 then 2 2.2 so we can specify the increment operation by fractional value also so here is the code for your reference the key learning here is that we have to specify the data type and then we can specify the increment operator value as a fractional value also let us move to the next example that is single expression iteration Suppose if I just want to iterate over just one value that is possible starting from 21c, we just need to specify the value. Suppose let me say 100. In this case, the iteration will just happen just only once. In this case, just 400. Let me say like 250 or 150. In this case, it will just happen only for one value. So this is the example for single expression iteration. So here is the code for your reference. The key learning here is we just need to specify for which value the iteration should happen. Let us see our last example that is multiple iteration or chaining of iteration. So here is our basic for loop example which is just iterating from 1 to 5. Basically as part of the chaining of iteration we can combine all these examples together or whatever the example you need or whatever the functionality you need you can combine or chain all those things together. Let us try to combine all the four examples as part of this. The first example is basically for step to range iteration. I just want to step by 2 in an iteration from 1 to 10 so basically it will print from 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Then let us try to uh, do the fractional range iteration. So basically just what I need to do, I just need to put a comma and then I need to give the next set of values. Let's say 1.5 to 5.5. I'm just executing this. Now you can see here the first value that is 1357 is basically for the step range specified here. And the next set from 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is basically for the next one. Suppose if I want to make this as a fra fractional range, I just need to mention the data type here. Let's say number of 5 comma 2. Let me re-execute the statement. Now you can see the first set is basically for stepped range. The second set of output is basically for the fractional range. Now let us add our fractional stepped range also. Let me just copy the same thing. Let me say by 1.2. Let me just re-execute. Now you can see the first range is first set of output is for stepped range. Second set of output is for fractional range. The third set of output 2.7, 3.9, 5.1 is basically for the fractional stepped range. That is because of 1.5 to 5.5 increment by 1.2. Let us add one single range expression also here. Let me just add this here. Now you can see that is also added as part of this. So basically in this example what we are doing we are trying to combine all these iterations together. So the key learning here you can combine multiple things here. Basically in this case I am just adding the first set is basically for stepped range. The second set is basically for fractional range. The third set is basically for fractional stepped range. And the fourth example is basically for single iteration. Basically the learning is we can combine all those things together. So here is the example for your reference. So here is the output. So you, we can see here the very basic thing that is i in 1 to 10 by 2. So basically the output is from 1, 3, 7, 5, 7, 9. The second part is 1.4 to 5.6. This is nothing but fractional range iteration. This is fractional range iteration. The first part is stepped range iteration. So let me just mention the output also here. So the 1, 3, 5, 7, 9 is basically for the first set that is 1 to 10 increment by 2. The second set that is 1.4, 2.4 till 5.4 5 
is basically for the fractional range iteration so this this section the third part is fractional stepped range so this is a fractional incremented by 0.2 so the output is from 11.5 to 15.5 you can see this is because of this fractional stepped range and the fourth part is single expression iteration that is because of this and this is for the example 4 and the output is for 100 and this is for single expression iteration the last part i just put the reverse also and this is also kind of a stepped range only but in a reverse direction so reverse from 90 to 95 that is from 95 it will start printing so here is from 95 to 90 and the example is again for the stepped range iteration only so this is the example again for stepped range iteration so basically the learning here is we can combine all those things together and that is called the chaining of iterations if you have learned something new please like this video subscribe and stay tuned for new feature video interview question sql practical question and concept videos and thanks a lot for watching this video